it's a Jason Ong, so you can be wherever cool. you Cool, yeah, want. let me come over here. Yeah. Since I got the video pointing this way. Oh, maybe I'll see it, I don't know. You can y'all see me if I see it? Laid back or every, you want to just tell him quickly what you do? Yeah, well, so that was going to ask. Yes, um, entrepreneurship, obviously you don't have to be musicians, but since we're in the music building. Yeah, and um, this is entrepreneurship for musicians. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so we are all musicians. Mm -hmm. All right. And a lot of so. graduate students and upper class. Yeah. yeah, I'm a first year grad studying string pedagogy. I play guitar. Okay. Um, I'm a senior in music ed. Okay. Like you look really familiar, so I don't know if I've known you in a past life or. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, senior um, violin, violin performance major. Okay. Uh, first year masters uh, flute performance major. Okay. First year grad saxophone performance. Okay. Uh, senior jazz guitar performance. Nice. Senior bassoon performance. All right. Double read. Mm -hmm. First master's program of choral conducting. Okay. So a nice, uh, nice mix, uh, yeah. variety mix. Yeah. Uh, it's good. It's in here. So I'm not really here to talk about no, but nonprofits, um, but one last point on this stuff. So when you get into, if you want to start something like a, an arts camp or whatever that you might want to start, um, everybody goes to nonprofit first. And as a business owner, I'm for profit and there's nothing wrong with that. You can do art stuff for a profit you're not going to hell, okay? If you do it right and you serve others. And so that's gonna be the end of my talk, is serving others. Yeah, and he came here today. He's, he's very generous. He came here, we are not paying Jason Ox anything but a, a good night in, in my guest room and a good dinner. Yeah. He's, he, yeah. So yeah, it's all about serving others. And so if you go into it with that mindset, you can do a business that's for profit. That's the way the rest of the world works. Why does the music industry have to do everything nonprofit? Nothing wrong with nonprofit, but there's also nothing wrong with making money. Okay? Um, and if you want to see a structure for a nonprofit uh, outside of music that is absolutely amazing and I support uh, monthly, um, is an organization called Charity Water. I'm very passionate about getting water to all people in the, on the earth because it's it's there, it just has to be helped to, to, to provide it. And so if you look up uh, Charity Water and the, the founder, Scott Harrison, um, he has two, essentially, if you wanna break it down basic, he has two bank accounts. One that he pays all of his overhead out of, and one that all the donations go into that build uh, water projects. 100% of donations from you or me goes to build water projects if you say so, 100%, even if you pay with a credit card. Out of their expenses account, they pay for their credit card fees, so literally 100% of your money goes to a water project. And it's extremely difficult and extremely unusual for that type of nonprofit to exist, but he has made it happen. And the, the way it happens is because he gets other donors to donate to the overhead because businesses need copy paper and travel and employees. And so there's people that make lots of money that are okay with giving their money uh, to that organization just to, to pay a, a salary. Okay, so enough about that. Um, so basically, I'm me, I'm Jason, I'm an oboist. Uh, I wanted to be a professional oboe player. Uh, we're a little short on time, so I'll probably just uh, skim over some of the stuff, but, um, but at some point I started doing auditions and realized how hard it was out in the world. But all through my, my collegiate time, undergraduate and graduate, I was always tinkering with my oboe and everybody said, man, you, you're really good at that. You should try to repair oboes for a living. And so I did like it, but I never thought about actually pursuing it until I was a semester out of graduating uh, from my master's degree and started auditioning and you know, didn't make it five minutes, two minutes in the process. It was really difficult. Um, you know, I knew where I was. I, I always had to really struggle to kind of be mediocre to average OO player. And so to, for me to realistically think that I could make 
whatever symphony, you name one, uh, was not realistic. Uh, just the way, and so I was just, I just knew that about myself. And so after that first audition, I just said, hey, uh, that's not for me. I was newly married. I was like, I gotta provide for the family now. Um, I don't want to work at McDonald's the rest of my life while I'm trying to land that big job for the next 20 years. Even people that land the big jobs, it takes them 10 to 20 years to do it a lot of times. Now you will hear of the, the prodigies that go in straight out of Curtis or wherever and they land that principal position somewhere. Um, and of course, I'm speaking of oboe. I know some of you are string players and there's probably more jobs available, so I don't know about how a string world is, uh, but in the oboe world, there's really only a couple jobs available here and there. And then just two weeks ago, Nashville Symphony held auditions for the principal oboe player. All these people traveled all over the country to come and audition. Amazing people. I know a bunch of them. They didn't hire anybody. Second time in a row. Two years in a row, they held an audition they didn't hire. So even if you are good enough, they may just not hire. So there's things that happen politically in, in the world that we don't know about so much um, that doesn't matter how good we are. So I saw all that and I decided to go a different, different way. So I went to a repair school, uh, learned the basics, and then I got hired by a music store. I worked in that, that environment for six years. Um, and all the time knowing I wanted to do oboe specialty. And so five to six years in, I started making my plans. And so that's what I did. Um, I wasn't planning on quitting the music store when I did, uh, but there was a management switch. And the, the manager that hired me was an amazing human being and so blessed to know him. Uh, he passed already, but uh, to have known him and to be mentored by him um, but one of my coworkers was promoted to the shop manager because my manager that hired me was promoted further into the company. And from day one, the, the dude did not know how to manage. He was not a leader. Um, he had no idea how to interact with humans um, besides drinking beer and smoking pot. And so he was not a good manager and a good leader. And right away, Everybody in the shop just hated coming to work. Um, and so a couple months into that, it was just, it was brutal. You just hate going into a space. And so I would go in, plug in my music, literally shut myself off and just do what I was supposed to do. And I would leave not talking to anybody. And everybody did that. It was a really bad situation. Um, and so that's what, that's when I decided it was time. And so, uh, you can't just stop and start something else. You kind of got to make plans. And so I did. I gave myself a year uh, to come up with a business plan and started buying tools and some supplies. And I didn't have anywhere to work, so I bought a building that I could work out of. It was like a you know, 24 by 8 foot shed that went in my backyard. So it was really like 125 square feet or something. So just big enough for me to do my work. And uh, anyway, after a year, I gave myself a deadline to do that, and I did. And September 1st, 2005 was my first day uh, self-employed. Um, and it's, it's been amazing. It's been extremely scary. <laughs> um, but I, you do everything in your life uh, at a time when you can do it. Okay, I, I firmly believe if you make a little bit of preparations and planning, um, you'll be able to persevere. Um, if I tried to do that now with teenagers and my do oldest daughter is going to college next year, we would not be able to survive, right? Just because household expenses are astronomical right now, my wife and I are in our most expensive phase of life with teenagers on insurance and college and just going and doing all the time. You guys know how it is, right? Nickel and dimes your parents. Um, and it's, you know, my, my, anyway, okay. Yeah, my parents like just stopped taking my calls. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, so you can do every, if you, with a little bit of planning and you kind of do things, think very practically and common sense type uh, situation, you should be able to work through most everything, even though you might be living on ramen noodles, which you probably already are, so it doesn't matter, right? You can just continue doing that for a couple of years. Um, well, and it sounds like you were, you were in a place, I, um, I have a friend that does a lecture about when things are, like, when it's pretty bleak, that's mm -hmm. when you make some of your biggest decisions and your, your biggest mm -hmm. changes, yeah. and it sounds like that may be the case for you as well. Yeah. You were pretty unhappy. Yeah. So what, so what do you have to lose? Yeah, so um, talking about entrepreneurship, so when I decided to do that and start my business, my next point was um, nowadays in our culture in the past few years, it's really become big. Schools offer these entrepreneurship classes. I actually just spoke to a class at Middle Tennessee State uh, just near me um, like a month and a half ago. And so I didn't really know what that term was. And so when I decided to start my own business, I was not thinking that I'm an entrepreneur. Um, so number one, I think that word can get in the way. Okay, it's a big word. Um, but I, I was unhappy. And what I thought about was getting out of that unhappy rut and how could I do it? And so I had a direction to go. I was an oboist. Um, I've been to repair school. At that point, I had five, five and a half years of repair experience in the real world. Um, all the while honing my oboe skills, uh, playing and um, repairing so that I could go out on my own and be an oboe specialist. And so I had all of that building over those years, even though I didn't know exactly why I would need it or when I would need it. Okay. Um, so, didn't think about entrepreneur. Um, a few things to consider about entrepreneurship. Um, so, I'm following a guy. Uh, if you guys want to be entrepreneurs or thinking about staying self employed through your music uh, and working with other entities, say an orchestra or a uh, university or whatever. Um, a gentleman that I follow right now, his name is Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, all you have to do is like Google Gary. Really, you could just do that and he'll pop up because uh, he's such a sensation in the business world. Uh, but Gary V, V E E for short, uh, that'll find him. And so recently I've heard him say a few things and I feel that they're so, so true just looking back on what I've been through. Um, but if you have to be taught what an entrepreneur is, it's very possible you're not one. Okay, so these are the things that you may not hear um, and it may be not easy to hear because everybody wants to do their own thing. Um, but how many of you love being on a strict diet and you love running six miles a day and you love working 12 hours a day and then you go home and you do more work so that you can make it? and you can kill it. How many of you love doing that? Okay, we, have, we have one entrepreneur in here. Oh, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Okay. No, I'm just saying it takes discipline to be a true entrepreneur. And so if you just like the idea of being an entrepreneur, it's like being disciplined to go work out or run every day because you want to run a marathon. You, some people will not go work out no matter how much they know it's going to benefit their health. Okay? And entrepreneurship is like that. It's just you know it and you do it because you know that it has to happen to get the outcome that you want. There's nothing wrong with not being an entrepreneur and working for somebody. Um, totally not. That's totally great. Right? You wouldn't be able to go to Burger King if that was not so. Or you wouldn't be able to shop at wherever you like shopping, okay? So everybody can't be one. Um, but it does take some certain, I say discipline, but it almost has to be, it's inherent, it has to be there without you thinking about it, essentially, I think is the point, okay? 
Um, and then the other quote I, re I just heard Gary say last week, uh, entrepreneurship is a lifestyle, not a tactic. Okay, so yes, you have to have plans and you have to look ahead, but really it's, it's a lifestyle. It's about the process of getting to where you wanna go. It's not necessarily about when you get there, okay? I have goals in, in my business, but like, if I reach those goals, am I just gonna quit that day? I'm gonna change your mind over dinner. <laughs> okay. So, we'll it's, about it's it. not about the end goal, it's about the process to get there. Because your goals will always change, and so when you get to a goal that you think was your goal, you'll have new goals. And so really it's about a lifestyle of loving what you do to keep going, essentially, okay? Is he a big contractor? Is he a big area? What is he? Oh, um, he yeah, he, he owns why. multiple businesses, so okay. not really okay. contractor, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so uh, one of the books I read in, in the past, um, I can't remember who it was, so, but you can Google this, uh, this quote, begin with the end in mind. Um, that's another kind of, uh, not saying, we talked about not being a tactic, but you know, it's a strategy and it's a discipline. Um, you will not know what you wanna get to in the beginning, but you do have, a, have, to have a little bit of uh, forethought and, and discipline to to have a plan, right? And so you won't have a 100% clear picture of where you wanna go, because that will develop more over time. But you do have to start out and say, okay, six months, one year, five years, I would like to be here. And you draw the line and you say what that line stands for. Um, because if you don't look out and have like a six month, one year, five year, uh, for say an organization that you want to start that's a nonprofit, uh, you will not get there. And so you need to begin with the end in mind. Um, passion, you may have heard that before. Okay, so, and people throw out passion and dreams. And so sometimes we can get lost in those words, but passion is real. Uh, passion is what is going to wake, make you wake up and be super excited to go the next day of doing whatever it is you're pursuing. So if you want to be an entrepreneur so bad but you're selling shoelaces to do it but you hate it, that's not going to be sustainable. Okay? I hate teaching. I love teaching. I like speaking. I like doing this teaching, so I guess this is teaching. Um, well, let me clarify. My wife is a public school teacher, or was. I would be in jail <laughs> if I was in that setting, okay? So that's not something that I would be passionate about. Um, as a musician, I knew from the beginning I would not be a good band director, uh, probably for the same reasons. Um, and so I never pursued education because I knew that would never happen in a million years for me. Um, just that's not the way I like to interact and teach with people. Um, so my, my degrees were you know, performance based, um, so I didn't want to do that education part of it. Because um, that's what I was passionate about and what I was not passionate about. And so your passions will develop over time, um, but it is real. Uh, but, it, but it can't be kind of like just sitting there daydreaming right dreams are good dreams help us get goals and and that type of thing uh, but you you have to act on dreams or they're useless um, but having a passion to get to that dream uh, that you're striving for uh, is is very very important um, passion brings um, a level of um, what the word I'm trying to think of. Um, well, I'll start over. We need patience. We get excited. Passion brings excitement. And we want to have it overnight. 
And so if you're going to be successful, um, you have to have patience working that passionate goal every day. Uh, you cannot expect uh, to open the nonprofit since we've been talking about that. And you have a goals and, and dreams of that nonprofit raising two million dollars so you can do XXX projects. It's very unrealistic for that to happen in six months or one year. So when you have that passion, that's going to keep you going every day and driving and driving and driving, but you have to be patient and you have to grind every day. Um, and that's what the passion is going to help you do because it's going to be super hard. You're going to be like three years in, you're like, I'm still not there, you know. Um, but if it's truly a, an amazing project and you're benefiting others, um, it, it will come to fruition. But it's going to be a lot of hard work, especially in the under, uh, the nonprofit world. Okay. So can I, so we, we're done at 10 till. Oh, 10 till. I know, so okay. sorry about that. But so, um... So let's do, Can, Yeah, tell. I want to do q and I was going to talk yes. about partnerships, but we won't do that. Yeah. Um, my last po major point, whatever you do, sometimes it's not possible, but you guys have to live your life, life as debt free as possible. Okay. It's such a burden. And if you're trying to get other people's money, for a nonprofit again, but your financial life is a mess, how are you expect people to trust you with their money? Okay? Um, and we won't get into philosophies of debt and what's good debt and what's bad debt. All debt is bad because you are indebted to others. I had as much student loan as probably some of you do, so I'm, I'm just saying this from experience. My wife and I were able to get out of debt early in our marriage uh, just basically due to a family inheritance that we were totally not expecting. And we got that money, and while my wife's brothers did other things, we said, we're going to honor your mother's life and the money that we just got from her passing early, and we're going to honor her by getting out of debt and never going back. And that happened like 13 years ago. And so we haven't had a credit card in forever, and we live on a budget day to day, and my business is also run that way. And so, as fast as you can get there, and you start a business, do it the same way. Because uh, you'll be able to, there's, there's a weight that's, that's released, and you'll be able to serve more people better without that hanging over your head. Cool. Um, sorry, I, I just, Sorry, I was late a few no, minutes, no, but uh, we, we, well, we got a few minutes. So if y'all have questions about anything that I just mentioned or anything that's on top of your head for ideas that you have, I uh, may or may not be able to answer them, but I'll try. Yeah, and so I, if, I can, if I can say, I always say like, I think I was talking to Katie about a niche or like your passion and a niche thing. So what his niche is, why I go? Why I use Jason Arts? Because there's other repairmen that are great. You know why I use you? Because no. you give me my oboe back on time. <laughs> like so, that's like that's a thing. Yeah. I mean, you'll you. It could be like two months, and I'll be like, "Are you sending my oboe back like somebody else?" This right. is one of the re this is one of the things that makes you amazing. Other than the fact that you've got mad skills. Yeah. So he's got mad skills. I always say, get mad skills in everything. He's got mad skills, and I know that I can rely on him to get my instrument back. He makes an appointment and gets yeah, it back. Yeah, so that's a good point, and thank you for saying that. You're I welcome. appreciate I it. it. Um, the golden rule, right? Yeah. We've all grown up possibly hearing the golden rule. Well, did yeah. you know that other repairmen didn't? Did you ever have this experience? So it's funny. As a repair person, I never really went to another repair person. <laughs> okay, I just played yeah. my played my oboe until it was falling apart. Right. Although I tinkered with mine, right? And I studied with a person that was very good with repair. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the catch twenty two. You know, you mm -hmm. you don't do the the maintenance that I preach. Um, 
but um, I forgot what I was saying. Um, totally lost my train of thought. No, Go ahead, no, I'll think no. about it. So, any questions for like how we started? What? Oh, know, the golden rule. I mean, you guys want to be treated like crap? <laughs> you know, if you have a, an instrument and you take it in for repair and they say, yeah, we'll get to it, and two months later it's still not done, yeah. I mean, how's that to treat anybody? Yeah. And so you want to treat people how you expect to be treated by other people. It's very basic, but I, it's extremely hard to do. Empathy, like, oh my yes. God, that person doesn't have this instrument. You know. Empathy, yeah, is, yeah. exactly. Sorry, go ahead, anybody? Questions about like how to get after <coughs> what? Anyway, what's your curiosity about any of this? During that, you said like a year of preparation before you really just started uh, going solo. Were you in those plans? Were you like studying up on um, just a whole new system of like taxes and things like that that was just going to be kind of just you would think that that would have been a smart thing to do, but no, <laughs> no. Uh, really, uh, starting a business that I was doing, just as a you know, solo uh, entrepreneur, um, sole proprietor is the business term, the legal term, uh, when you go and do your business license. Um, yeah, it's it's. There's new information you need to know, but it's not that complicated. And so I did not do all that stuff. I was just really, I was working a ton um, with extra money that I had coming from my paycheck that I was getting. I was buying stuff that I needed, uh, securing the building that I got, um, and just thinking, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? You know, logistics, you know, having customers come into my house. Does the city like the customers coming to people's houses? You know, so I did figure out some of those things. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't do the business stuff. And so, and to that point, when uh, that day came, September 1st, 2005, and I was like on my own, I thought I was gonna be waking up late, uh, sipping lattes on my back porch, listening to the birdies squeal and squeak. I was in Savannah, Georgia at the time. Um, but I did none of that stuff. I was working like 12, 15 hours a day. That's when I started figuring out Georgia Department of Revenue and the federal taxes and uh, sales tax and you know different things that you have to do as a business owner and do you yeah. have an accountant or do you do, do you do it all to your, all yourself I did it all myself mm -hmm. for the first several years mm -hmm. because I didn't make a profit mm -hmm. right your first years you're not making much money so you know did you have a job as well or did you just you were doing this mm -hmm. I just okay. but I gave myself a year to get there mm -hmm. and Good. so my wife and I planned had some so you, savings you saved up yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, again, we just did this again. My wife and I taught for 18 years in this public schools. Uh, she was getting to a point where she wasn't happy anymore and was not passionate. And we made a plan for her to quit teaching and come into our business because I have a few team members, employees, and I couldn't handle it all by myself anymore. And so Beth came into the, the business about a year and a half ago, and we made a one-year plan for her to transition that because we would be going from a two income household to a one. So we did the same thing and we saved about three quarters of her paycheck. So we basically went ahead and cut our budget a year before we needed to. And we stockpiled most of her money, which came out great because we had to get insurance for the very first time on our own, which was we're paying more for insurance than we ever have in our life. Um, yeah. So I've never advertised. Um, as So doing what I wanted to do as an oboe specialist, um, you can advertise until you're blue in the face and all your money that you eat on and live on would be gone and you would still have no customers, okay? Because it's such a niche specialty. Um, and so people that come to me now, um, I mean, we do get some that just Google oboe repair and they'll find us and they'll like what they see and they call us, but most of it is referrals. Yeah, that's okay. how I know him. 
So, you know, one player told another player, tells another player, and then it filters down through the system. So then we got teachers telling students, uh, students grow up a little bit and get more students. And so it's, it's kind of like the, you know, the network marketing world, I guess. I would, um, I would say though, I think your, your website helps. It's not like an ad, you're not selling an right. ad. But I think just some of the content he has on his, because I don't know that just the referral of my friend would have had me go to him because it's your instrument, right? Yikes. Um, yep. And so and you should be careful of that or whatever you're and whatever you're buying, um, whatever services you're getting, like it's even a, getting a facial, you know, that's your face kind of thing. So the th you know what I love is your video about like really cleaning the. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That Maybe. one's that one's yeah. got a lot of views. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think the content on his website. Yeah. So and when I said I don't advertise, that's like traditional. Yeah. Advertising. Okay. So yes, I have a website, and we're very active on social media right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so yes, for you going and starting something, whether that's a self-employment, for-profit, um, or whatever nonprofit, whatever you guys, what your goals are going towards. Social media is the king, okay? How many of you guys sit in your living room and you're watching your favorite TV show, whether that's a, a network show or a Netflix show, and then you watch the commercial? What do you do when the commercial comes on, if there are commercials? I gotta get a drink of water or pee. <laughs> <laughs> right. This comes up to your face. Okay, so this is where people are, and that's where you need to be, social media. Uh. <laughs> so advertising, if you're, if you're gonna do something, um, let's say it's, it's not a, just a business for yourself, but you're going into a, an organization type, nonprofit business, um, you definitely could do some Facebook and Instagram advertising, um, get some of the swipe up features going on with the Instagram, uh, Facebook, it's like, it's where, it's where it needs to be. And then you always have to be ahead. So I'm always Googling what's next in social media because the next app, you know, um, what was that? Uh, the one the little kids were using musically. Y'all remember that one? I don't know if you, you probably didn't use it yourself, but you probably heard of it maybe. Well, they were bought out by another company and I, I can't even remember what it's called now, but it's huge. Okay. And so you kind of got to keep up and going forward because that's not going to change. The platforms are going to change. New social medias are going to change and, and start. And I, I but think also, I think, you know, like I know you guys are not big Facebookers, right? Right. But the people that you might be trying to get to. That's right. Are, might be Facebook people. Yeah, you need to be where you the demographics are. And you, you can go into certain Facebook groups that might. So for me, I have a Snapchat account. I haven't started yet because it scares me a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to start. Um, I have like two followers or something or whatever you call it on Snapchat. Um, but Snapchat is where the 15 to 25 year olds are. Do you guys have how, Snapchat? How many of you have it? Yeah. I don't have it. Don't use it anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it like bye bye now? Well, no. Instagram no. stories kind of took that. For like our age group, but I know other people. Yeah, yeah. So the stories and uh, Snapchat has stories also. So uh, it's, you so just old. you just got to keep on <laughs> you got to keep on top of it and use it. And even if you don't do like paid stuff on them right now, right away, you can need to be super active because content is a king. If you see something thirty times versus another person you see once, who are you gonna remember? Okay, and that's the same with with traditional print media. Uh, statistics tell us in, in print, like a magazine, if you were to advertise, it takes at least 20 times for a person to see that ad before they say, oh, I've seen that before. I like to watch, when I go get my hair done or something, I like to watch people on social media and see how long it takes them to go. Like, what makes them stop? Right. It's interesting to me. It is very like, interesting. And, and then they'll be like, you know, <laughs> if you don't get it, in in like 10 seconds 
people are like, boy, bye bye. You know, like, um, yeah. Yep. Fa so you fascinating. You need to research and study how to create a video for for social media if you're going to do that. Um, I'm in my infancy of learning all that. Okay, so I'm I'm taking more video so that I can learn. I can become a better speaker when I do these things, mm -hmm. but I can also use this content to do little snippets. And so when I do that little, there's gonna be snippets from this on Instagram, and it's gonna be something, it's gonna be something <laughs> that's gonna say, it's gonna be like the, the line of, you know, if you wanna be an entrepreneur, or whatever I said a while ago, right? It's gonna be, you know, if, you're, if you have to think about it and you have to be taught what it is, you're not one kind of thing because that like grabs people's attentions. People you know? aren't gonna like that. So <laughs> that's good, and that's good. I want people to not like it because I think it's the truth. Mm, so I think we have diff maybe different definitions of what an entrepreneur is, and, and it's okay. And it's yeah. all semantics, yeah. really. Yeah, uh, but the, the idea I is- I think you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, but I've never said that I'm an entrepreneur. You go on my social media, you will mm -hmm. not find the word entrepreneur. But you can scroll and for hours, and you can. How many people have you seen that says entrepreneur? It's the. It's the. I okay. think it's the. I think it's the. The term right now. I yeah, it is. The term. It is the term. So I, I don't know. But eighty yeah. percent of the entrepreneurs haven't made money yet. If you get people to donate money for your venture that you want to start, that's not a business. Now you can get there. But if you call yourself a business owner, an entrepreneur, just because somebody gave you $30,000, uh, that's not really, businesses make money. They don't take money. Well, I'm gonna, I have questions. I may have some questions. Okay. So, yeah, so we're over time. Um, I have time if you guys don't have to leave. Um, yeah. Uh, Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you for, for yeah, talking to Thanks us. for having me. And he's in Nashville. He's he's down in a little south of the city, right? You're a little south. Yeah, and southeast. You, he has yep. this really cool. Um, it's like an airplane hangar. Right. Right. Yeah, we're at our local town, Smyrna. Uh, we're at the airport, so I'm actually in a it's space really in an airport hangar. So it feels really cool to me because you know he's kind of like you're a builder of things. Right. And right. Like, so I don't know. I I find that to be perfect. But uh, didn't want to scare anybody, but. Uh, business is tough and so you do have to make a plan and you have to work really hard every day and having passion for that whatever it is is a huge plus um, you may or may not have it right away and it may take you a few ideas to find the true passion but the idea is to start and not be well you're gonna be scared but you have to start okay thank you sweet okay. thanks for having me guys